Hello, and welcome back to the Cedilcast. This video continues the sequence on generically deriving induction for Mendler style lambda encoded data in Cedil. The first video in the sequence introduced the notions of F algebras, Mendler style F algebras, and the fixed points of functors derived using them. It is recommended that you watch that video before continuing with this one. In this video, we reintroduce our definition of a monotonic type scheme which we first covered in the video on deriving recursive types, a la Tarski, which generalizes the notion of a functor. We show how this can be used to define the generic set of constructors for data types that will support an induction principle and make some progress on deriving this induction principle. Recall that monotonic F means that for any two types, A and B, if there is a cast between A and B, there is a cast between F of A and f of b. This is very similar to the definition of a functor, particularly uh, fmap for a functor, just that we restrict fmap to casts. Previously, we had defined in for Mendler style encodings, which hadn't required that our type scheme be a functor, and out, which did. Let's review some of these definitions. We saw before alg, the usual definition of an F algebra, fix, the carrier of an initial F algebra, fold, the catamorphism, alg m, the definition of a Mendler style F algebra, fix m, the carrier of an initial Mendler style F algebra, fold m, the Mendler style catamorphism, and n m, the initial F algebra, or the generic set of constructors of the data type, given some subdata, f of fix m, produce data fix m. Now, let us consider what goes wrong when we tr try to define out M. Out takes a data type and unravels it, unfolds it so that the subdata f of fix M is revealed. We have a D of type fixm. D takes, an al uh, takes any algebra and is able to return the carrier of that algebra. Here, the desired carrier is F of fixm. So we must provide an algebra whose carrier is F of fixm, given some type R, hiding the recursive subdata, function rec. which from the subdata computes the desired result. And D's of type F of R. We can see that if our type scheme F were a functor, as was the case in the previous video, then we would simply F map rec over D's. And this would give us F of fixm f of f of fix m, which we can then fold in with m. The approach we will take here instead is more subtle and requires first deriving an induction principle for the data type before we can even define out m. Intuitively, the type variable r in Mendler algebras will always hide the actual data type itself, here type fix m. We need to be able to reveal this fact in the form of cast from R to fix M. So let us now define a Mendler style proof algebra, which is similar to the type of inductive NAT from the first two videos on this channel. A 
proof algebra M. takes as arguments some carrier x which is a stand-in for two types the data type fix m and the inductive variant fix end m which we will define in terms of the proof algebra itself a property p which we use to prove of our data type and initial, alg initial algebra n, or folding function, which we have already defined for the version of the data type fixm, but we will also need to use for the inductive version of the data type fixendm. As before, we quantify our type R, representing the recursive occurrences of the data type. But now we equip the proof algebra with a cast C. From R to X. Notice that this additional argument is erased so that the terms witnessing a proof algebra with, will align with those witnessing a regular Mendler style algebra. The function for making recursive calls becomes IH, which says that for any little r of type R, P holds for R after we cast R to the appropriate type. We also take our subdata, R's, of type F of R, and the proof algebra returns a proof that P holds for the N of R's after we cast this to the appropriate type. For example, if our data type were nat, then the inductive hypothesis is like saying P holds for M, and the return type is like saying P holds for the successor of M. Following Cedillo's usual recipe for deriving induction, we use this to define what it means for some fix M to be inductive. Some fixm is inductive if, for all p, properties over fixm. Given a proof algebra over fixm, proving p using an initial algebra, the initial algebra in m, this suffices to show that p holds of x. Then, our real data type is formed from the intersection of fixm and proofs of their inductivity. Fixendm is the type we will actually be defining an out function for. But first, we have to define an in function for this new type. Before we do that, it's useful to be able to have a cast between fixendm and fixm. Because fixendm is an intersection, this is easy to, to define.
Over here, we need a function from fix end m to fix m. Fix end m is defined as an intersection. The first component is fix m. The erasure of x point one is just x. So this conversion function is intentionally an identity function. So to prove that for all fix end m, that after converting, we produce the same result that we had before, holds by simple beta reduction. Our first version of n for the inductive fix end m uses the cast lifting function mono to transform the cast from fix end m to fix m to a cast from f of fix end m to f of fix m. Here's our first version, n for end m1. We need some f of fix m. This gives us a function from f of fix in dim to f of fix in, which just erases to, which after applying to d's, just erases to d's. This means in particular that this first half of our in function is precisely equal to in m. because it simply applies nm to d's. The second half of the n function we have to define must show that the fix m formed by using n end m1 is itself inductive. given some d's of type f of fix and dim show that it is inductive. To, to show this, we may we assume some arbitrary property p and a proof algebra showing that P holds for all fix M constructed by NM, provided that P holds of the subdata of type R. Now we must show that P holds for the constructed fix M from N end M1 of D's. Our proof algebra will allow us to prove that P holds of the NM of a casted D's, but this is convertible with the expected type. P of N of casted D's. Having the algebra, we may choose how to instantiate the type R for recursive occurrences of the subdata of Ds. We pick fix endm. Our proof algebra is over the data type fixm, so we must show how to cast fix endm to fixm, which we have already.
we must provide the algebra with an inductive hypothesis given some subdata of type fixed end m. Select the view of it as being an inductive fixed m. which, given a proof algebra, returns a proof that P holds of it. We have such a proof algebra already. Finally, the last argument is the unfolded data Ds to run the algebra on. First, notice that the expected type and the actual type are different. The expected type that we had to show was that P holds of n end m1 d's. The type of this expression highlighted here is that P holds of n m casted d's. But these two types are convertible. A limb cast erases to lambda xx. or lambda AA here. And we showed already that in M and in end M1 are convertible. So the two types are convertible. Second, notice again that in end M has the same erasure as in M. The two unerased arguments to alg are lambda d, d of alg, and d's. This cast is given in an erased position. In m itself has two arguments. The first one, a folding m of alg, which is just applying the subdata d to the algebra, and d's. This allows us to construct the true folding in function for fixed end m. Call it end m, in end m. Unfortunately, we must end this video on something of a cliffhanger. We are very close to being able to define the induction principle for fixed end m, but there is still a very important piece missing, which we will cover in the next and last video in this sequence. Let's attempt the definition of induction and see what goes wrong. To prove induction for fixed end m, we must show that for all p, properties of fixed end m, given a proof algebra over the data type fixed end m before we were concerned with proof algebras of fixed m. Proof algebras over fixed end m proving p using the initial algebra in end m show that for all d P holds of D. Introduce our property, our proof algebra, and our term D. Given these, the only way we know how to prove things about D is by the view of it that D is an inductive fix M. Alas, D.2 allows us to prove properties of fixed M, but P is a property of fixed end M. D.2 also expects 
a proof algebra over fixum. But what we have is a proof algebra over fix indium. What we need, and what we'll show next time, is a way to convert first any property P over fix indium to an equivalent property of fixim. Second, any proof algebra over fix indium to an equivalent proof algebra for fixim. So in the next video, we'll introduce the final bit of kit we need to make that conversion by augmenting our cast type with a way to remember that some property P holds of some data that has been casted from another type. That is to say, that P holds of some fix end M that has been casted from a fix M. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.